What we want to do next is we want to come up with a derivative of this exponential function here. Particularly, we're going to look at e to the x. So e to the x is something you probably would have gone over in pre-calculus. e is a, a constant. It's equal to about 2.7. We're raising that to an x. So this is an exponential function because there's an x in the exponent position. We want to find the, the derivative of this, and we haven't talked about that yet. So we're going to go back to something that we've always gone back to for finding new derivatives, and, and that's using the limit process. So that's what we're going to do here. Recall that the limit process is it's ones that involve h, and we're using our difference quotient. So h goes to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x, all that's going to be over h. So here's our function, f of x is e to the x. So we want to find f of x plus h, which means that you're going to put x plus h in place of the x there. So we're going to do limit as h goes to 0, and then you're going to do e to the x plus h minus f of x, which is our original function, e to the x, and then that's going to be over h. Now, if I put 0 in there, I'm still dividing by 0, so I need to do some algebraic manipulation here uh, in order to solve this. What I notice for this is I'm going to do some exponent rules because the top part is one where I can kind of play around with that. So let's do apply some of our rules of exponents that we talked about previously. So the first one, if I have e to the x plus h, I want to take that back to two things with the same base multiplied together. So I can write that as e to the x and then e to the h. And I still have this over there. So this is the same thing. If I were to multiply this back together, I would be adding the exponents. So likewise, I can take it um, from one term back into two uh, by doing that step. I notice that I have a common factor now, e to the x, that I'm going to pull out. So what I'll do next is factor that out on top. So I have e to the x, and then I have e to the h minus 1. All that's going to be over h. Now this e to the x term, what I can do here is I can actually pull that out because as h goes to 0, that's not going to affect this at all, There's, that's not the variable that's being used. So the e to the x essentially can be brought all the way on the outside. So e to the x and I have limit, h goes to 0, e to the h minus 1 over h. Now, this part right here is actually something that you want to take a look at with a graph. So algebraically there's not really a way that we can solve this and the notes, I have a, a graph, and this is an exponential function uh, that's happening there. And so if you were to take a look at the graph, you would actually see something that looks like this. Okay, so in the notes I have the exact graph here. So at 1, there's an open circle, if you were to take a look at this particular graph here. So of course it's not defined at 0 because we're dividing by 0, so there's an open circle there. However, if you go to, from the left and from the right and evaluate the limit, this is going to be uh, at 1 uh, right there. So that means that this limit, this whole entire limit, I can write that as 1. So that means I get e to the x times 1, which is e to the x. So what I've done here is my derivative. That's what I just did with this whole limit process. In this case, we'll go ahead and put in e to the x. So, kind of an interesting thing happens. The derivative of e to the x ends up being itself. Okay, this is one of the only uh, functions that actually does that. So, so now, since we've gone through the limit process, we've done all that, we've shown that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so now we can just apply that now when we do our other examples.